Well, we're back with this. October is Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month. So knowing how, of course, properly to properly give CPR can be the difference between life and death. Yeah, it's something that we definitely need a refresher on. And here to demonstrate is Dr. Ross Brown, cardiologist with Memorial Hermann. Good morning, doctor. Thank you Good for being morning. with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, lots of questions here, but before we start, what exactly is cardiac arrest and some of the signs that come along with that? Right, so a cardiac arrest is an electrical disturbance in the heart. It's life-threatening. It, it causes the heart to stop pumping blood and therefore distributing to the major organs, including the brain. And can that happen at any moment? Can that happen because of, say, um, like a condition that you may have, or can that happen in a sporting event? It can happen under any circumstances. And in fact, the mortality rate is over 350,000 per year in the United States. So, so unfortunately, fairly common, but it really can happen anywhere. And that's why it's so important to educate the community about how to respond to these situations. Yeah. So, so what kind of signs are we looking for? I mean, a, a player goes down and I mean, you think about the, the, the gasp in the arena or wherever and everybody kind of freezes and that's we're like, right. we don't know what to do. What are we looking for in that moment? That's right. And a lot of people talk about heart attack versus cardiac cardiac arrest, there's, there's big differences there, right? Cardiac arrest is more of an electrical disturbance, which typically causes someone to collapse in a sporting situation or, or otherwise, whereas a heart attack is, you know, chest pain, sweaty, discomfort, but it doesn't render the patient unconscious necessarily. Mm -hmm. Cardiac arrest is an electrical disturbance and treating that involves uh, defibrillation, really, or resetting the electrical rhythm, whereas a heart attack is a blockage in, a blood, in, in, in the blood flow or an artery and, and that, uh, you know, the treatment for that really is opening that blockage or putting in a stent. And that it, requires more, like we're going to a hospital at that point, we're doing something that we can't right. really do on the floor of a, let's say a basketball court. That's right, and cardiac arrest is, is so important. Time is really of the essence. You know, we're talking 10 seconds before someone is unconscious, three to five minutes before brain damage starts t setting in, uh, and even, you know, eight to 10 minutes before we're talking about mortality rates close, you know, close to 100%. Oh my goodness, oh, wow. that is such a short amount of time right. before maybe an ambulance would even get there. That's right. So if we are at a sporting event, if something like, and it could be at home, if you're playing a, a game of baseball or any kind of sporting um, sports, so what do you recommend that people do in that moment? Would you say to start CPR as soon as possible? So what we recommend is you come up to the person probably on the ground, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna try to assess whether they're responsive or not. So you shake the patient, ask them, you know, do they, can you hear me? Are they responsive? Mm -hmm. Once you determine they're unresponsive, activate EMS, tell someone to call 911. Uh, <clears throat> next step would be to check their pulse. Probably the easiest way to do that is on either side of the neck, the carotid pulse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you determine there's not a pulse or you're not sure and they're not responding, that's when I would start CPR and we're talking you know, within 10 seconds if you can. Okay, within 10 seconds. That is not a lot of time. That's right. We need to, I feel like we need to be prepared for that. We need to practice. We need to know those steps. That's right. Every, it's important for everybody. That's okay, right. so we've done those steps. Hopefully we've gotten there quickly. How do we proceed now? Okay, so we're gonna start CPR and I'll kind of walk you through it if okay. you want. You're looking for the middle of the chest. And just a little disclaimer, because the doctor wanted us to mention this, typically the patient's on the ground and it's gonna be a little harder for us to demonstrate because yes. they're on a table and they, well, there are reasons for that. But anyway, I just right. wanna throw that caveat in there. Good CPR technique involves be, being above the okay. patient, locking yes. your elbows, shoulders above your hands. Okay. So you can get good strong compressions. It's important to compress a good two centimeters into an adult patient's chest. Okay. Right. So that's why you really need that pressure. That's right. Okay. So not lightly tapping here to get right. somebody going again. That's right. So you're going to press two cent two two inches really. Uh, let the chest recoil mm -hmm. to allow the the heart again to fill up with blood. Okay. And at a speed of about 100 to 120 per minute. Right. So two per second. We've heard staying alive, the old song is a good tempo, That's anything, right. and there's a, I think we Googled a list one day, they're like, you know, a bunch of songs with that correct tempo <laughs> That's right. that you can keep in your mind, which okay. at this point, it's, there, there's chaos, it's stress, you're not really thinking about music, you're just That's right. trying to go into your memory of That's what right. your training is. Adrenaline sort of takes over, and so you're going to naturally respond at a faster rate. Would you say that even if someone doesn't know really how to do it, any kind of this, any kind of pulp pressure to the chest, I mean, as best as they know how would help as well? Yes, and the idea is that, you know, the heart sits here in the chest on just under the sternum and on the left sides. So the idea is that you're compressing the heart to allow it to, to maintain some circulation, right? Mm -hmm. The ribs and the chest are designed to protect the heart. 
So it takes a good amount of pressure to, to compress the ribs and therefore compress the heart. How, how long, I mean, can, can we do that for how many minutes to save somebody's life? I mean, could we do this for a half hour until EMS finally shows up and by pushing that blood, we're keeping the person alive? How long is that, is it successful? That's, that's a good question. I mean, we hope that EMS will arrive within five or 10 minutes. And so yeah. that's the crucial time is that gap between. Uh, in a hospital or EMS setting, they, they would say 30 compressions two breaths to give the patient. I think in a bystander situation, compression is the most important and that's what we educate the, the general public about. And so this would be the, an adult size for a child. If, we, if it was a smaller chest, what would you say, or a baby? Is it different? Uh, a baby is, is different, really depends on the size. Okay. Um, and so anything from a tiny baby that you can hold between your hands and just use your thumbs to an older child, you might use two fingers or one hand technique. Okay. But the idea is to get the same amount of compression. That's right, to be able to compress the ribs. But doctor, at what point is it, do we bring in the defibrillator, these, these automatic external defibrillators, AEDs, I read, as they call them. That's right. I mean, they're in gyms, they're mm -hmm. in stadiums, they're in so many places these days because we realize that they save lives. That's at right. At what point does that device, do we go grab that off the wall? As soon as possible also, because this is an electrical disturbance, it's important to reset that electrical disturbance as fast as we can. So as soon as you activate EMS, have someone get the AED for you. You want to start compressions, that's number one, but as soon as the AED is available and arrives, you attach that to the patient and it will determine what, what rhythm is, is occurring and whether the patient requires a shock or not. Oh boy. Yeah. It's scary. It's, it, it is, but to understand that the time, that short amount of time, I didn't even realize it was just minutes. Right. Minutes makes a big difference. A huge difference, that's right. Okay. Um, do, sh do you recommend, doctor, that people go take a CPR course? I mean, is it anybody? Just people that work with athletes or children or in public places? I, I, mean, would, I would recommend everybody does it. You know, American Heart Association or um, uh, Red Cross provides CPR training. You never know when you're going to be needed, sporting event like you mentioned, or even a family member at a gathering. I mean, it could be literally anywhere, right? I mean, you could be driving down the street and this happens. That's so right. This you, is, never, right. you never know when you might. But for some along. reason, we tend to attach it to gatherings or sporting events. I mean, why do you think maybe that is? Which is where we see it the most? or? I think so. I mean, that's where the most eyes are, and that's what's received attention in the last year or so. But but like you said, it really could be could be anywhere. You Let could me, be alone with your spouse. Right. Let me ask you one other thing with regard to the defibrillators. Um, if we don't know how to use one, if we've never used one before, are we still grabbing that thing off the wall, or can we use it incorrectly and actually do more harm? They're, they're, very, they're designed to be very self-explanatory. There's diagrams where to attach the leads. It's really just one on either side of the heart, can be front and back as well, and it's really a three-step process. Attach the leads, turn the device on, press the button, it'll analyze and tell you whether a shock is advised or not. Okay. And that's really so all they're kind of straightforward in that sense. So anyone that works, let's say, in a gym or a place, they should have some kind of maybe training or at least understanding right. of it. That's right. That's right. And I, rest of us. I would say also, if you work in a place like that, make sure your defibrillators are, are up to date. The, the companies will check them, make sure the batteries are charged and, and, and working. Yeah. That's right. All right, Dr. Safety equipment. Dr. Ross yeah. Brown, yeah, this is, this is huge. Just to get this experience right in front of you, even at home knowing that if you're not experienced in it, just a good push. That's right, good, good just technique. Just keep going, is, is good technique. Sure. All right, doctor, thank you so yeah, much for, for teaching us this me. very important Absolutely. measures. Yeah.